right, peanut butter meets chocolate. Uh, uh, this is another uh, uh, fruitful collaboration from our first uh, Empirical Educator Summit. Um, this was, uh, I, I love this one because I, I didn't have to do anything other than introduce. Um, this is uh, Carnegie Mellon uh, and James Madison University. Um, I, I'm not sure, that, but I think this happened on the bus. Did it? No? Okay. In the bar. In the bar. Ah, in the bar. I Greasy, say. pizza, beer. Okay. Mixed drinks. Okay. All right. So there you go. Uh, love story in the making. So I'm, you know what? I'm not even going to introduce this one. I'm just going to get it out of the way. You guys take it away. Um, I'm Sarah Finney. I'm from James Madison University. Uh, I'm associate director for the Center for Assessment and Research Studies. And uh, I met Marsha in a dark bar in California. And she said, what do you do? And I told her about the work at James Madison University and where we um, are focused and our team, when I say we, we have uh, nine full-time faculty members who are trained in assessment, statistics, measurement, research design, and we have uh, tw uh, 20 graduate students that work with us. And I said, what we do is we help evaluate our five general education areas, our over 100 plus degree programs, and our dozens and dozens and dozens of student affairs programs. And we are really skilled in things like instrumentation, um, uh, validity issues, uh, how to make correct inferences given particular data collection schemes, data analysis. But boy, are we having trouble with faculty and our student affairs professionals using that data to uh, go back and make their programming better. And then I said, what do you do? <laughs> I'm glad you said it that way, because I thought I had perhaps said, what's a nice assessment researcher like you doing in a joint <laughs> like this? <clears throat> but when they talked about assessment, then I got really excited. Um, Sarah was there with uh, one of her colleagues, um, Keston, and they were talking about the assessment research as the core of their work, and this whole unit focused on that, whereas the Everly Center is really focused on the teaching side of the equation, but likewise, we need to think about assessment. So this is really the um, uh, difference in emphasis that we had, but definitely a lot of overlap. And we were kind of sharing our, our common challenges and opportunities. And we realized that even though we came at it from a very different perspective, the key was we were focused on learning outcomes and starting with measuring how are students getting to the goal. And so it felt like we were coming from different worlds and yet speaking the same language. And then during uh, last year's uh, a gathering, Marcia spoke and I spoke, and we took all that white space and laid out um, some trips and called each other and emailed each other for the last year. And Jean, my colleague, Jean Horst, she came um, to the Teaching as Research Institute that Chad just described um, in June. Then two colleagues from CMU came a month later down to JMU to go through our Assessment 101, which is a week-long uh, institute that goes through the whole outcomes assessment cycle, how to write goals and objectives, how to map curriculum, how to develop good instrumentation or find good instrumentation, how to gather data, and so on. Then a month later, Marsha came down to sit through our assessment day. So really quick. James Madison University engages in two large scales assessment days. All incoming students are tested uh, the first weekend that they come on campus, and that's to get baseline data. Then after they complete 45 to 70 credits, we reassess them to look at gains. Um, and all uh, degree programs also do assessment in the spring as well. And Marcia sat through our fall assessment day. It's amazing. And then since then, uh, we've come up with um, some other ideas for collaboration. Um, one thing is, also I'm going to shout out again to my colleague, Jean Horst. Uh, Jean set up um, a, a Learning Improvement Summit. And this was in 2017. And the Learning Improvement Summit, the first one, 
was in Washington, D.C., and it pulled together leaders in outcomes assessment, um, instructional design, and accreditation. And they wanted to talk about what is learning improvement, what can we do with respect to that. There was a second one in Auburn, and then Marsha was invited, but for some reason turned down going to Hawaii for the third one. Clearly, I have <laughs> my priorities in the wrong place. I think I had a gig. I was doing presentations Probably. here at Carnegie Mellon. Probably. But we want to get Marsha pulled in to the Learning Improvement Summit because while we're heavy on, if you agree with me, Jean, while we're heavy on assessment professionals, we're light on uh, cognitive science and learning professionals at the Learning Improvement Summit, and we would like her to, to, to play with us. And, and I don't know if it'll be in Hawaii again, but hopefully. <laughs> so one thing that I, we're getting some weird static there. One thing that I learned at the assessment day is um, I think emblematic of what, should I stop this? What we're talking about today. The issue being, um, context plays an important role. And James Madison, James Madison um, has a very different institutional context. So um, CARS, this center that um, Sarah mentioned, has the responsibility to support programs, academic and student affairs programs, in um, their responsibility at the university, their requirement to submit program assessment reports. So their institutional context is a requirement that programs um, complete. And as a result of that, they have that context has shaped their process into this amazing assessment day machine where all these students come in and do the assessment. At Carnegie Mellon, program assessment is not a requirement, but we want to encourage it and make it easy and make it high quality. So the quality of data that they're getting there, and actually Sarah's research is in that too, making sure that the data you get from assessment day are of high quality, we wanted to pull some of those ideas into our work. So what we generally are doing without assessment day is using embedded assessments. So in the course that a student is taking, Students might be doing something, creating an artifact. How can we use that to get a measure of their performance and their learning? That's a great way, because it doesn't require anything extra. But sometimes we have the opportunity to get students to do something extra, like Chad was saying, the expedited protocol. And so we're trying to pull in some of the practices of assessment day into one of our colleges that is uh, revamping their gen ed. And so they have a, a fresh start opportunity where we might be doing that, at least at the scale of uh, a college within Carnegie Mellon University. So that was a really great thing for me to learn about. Um, and the other thing that I think is really important, it's kind of like um, Keston, I think, came up with the analogy to um, you know, your avatars in a gaming scenario, where you, you, know, you pull up the profile of your player, and they might have um, good speed, and heavy armor, but they might not have um, the best weapon. And then another player might have really good weapons, okay armor, but not any speed. And this is sort of Keston's uh, version of the recent peanut butter that our strengths and our um, areas of expertise were really nicely complementary in terms of assessment. These guys create assessments. They create assessments that are homegrown to be high quality. And I can't emphasize enough that it's important to look at the quality of the data you're collecting. And so we're also looking to um, leverage some of the assessment instruments JMU has created. And when I was listening to you, Emily, uh, it was uh, when you were talking about in your work that faculty were engaged in writing the outcomes and implementing the curriculum but not really evaluating the programming, we're really good at evaluating the programming. Uh, that, that's not a problem for us. What we, what we struggle with is the very thing that you all have skills at, which is 
you know, evidence-informed practice, evidence-informed teaching. And as you said, most faculty aren't trained in that area. So when we give them, give them the data and say, well, you know, the kids started out at this level, we wouldn't expect them to know much, so that's fine. But then two years later, they're still at that level. What are you going to do with this information to change your programming? And their answer is often, I don't know. That's not what I was trained to do. And I remember when Jean came back from the Teaching as Research um, Institute, uh, she was talking about your canon of resources. Do you want to talk about that, the resources that you all put together? Um, so one of the things that we do, it's a, a lot like curating um, research articles, is that there are some really uh, classic and important seminal works in learning science that speak to learning mechanisms or instructional strategies that have been found to work in a variety of contexts. So we have, for our own professional develop, made sure, development, made sure that the Eberly Center folks, teaching consultants, learning um, engineers, assessment specialists, are well versed in these seminal research studies. And so as a result of that, we kind of make um, make available short descriptions of them. We have discussions of them, and so that was something that um, came through in our Teaching as Research Institute that Jean said, oh, there's a version of that that we'd like to do at CARS. And we are doing that. Jean's putting together a version of that where we have our seminal documents in outcomes assessment, with the goal being learning improvement, improving what students know, think, or do. And we're trying to emphasize that second step of mapping the curriculum back to the outcomes, but the curriculum should be evidence-informed, theory-based, um, which again is difficult. Um, and it's really hard for us because, I guess I didn't make this clear, in the Center for Assessment Research Studies, we're separate from our teaching and learning center. So we gather the data for the faculty and give it to them and trust that they're going to go across campus and meet with folks like Marsha on our campus and use that data to inform changes to their program. But many don't. Um, but that's another thing we're trying to think through is should we be merged? And speaking with you and Chad, I mean, those are things that we're kind of kicking around, you know. Is, is there a better way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're lucky at the Everly Center to have a teaching consultant team, an educational technology team, and an assessment team that work together under one roof. That said, I think all of us in the room um, have a common issue, which is collecting the data. And as Sarah said, you can get the uh, findings, but the real step is changing those insights into action and not stopping even there doing this cycle again to see if your changes, as hypothesized to help, actually made a difference and further increased the learning outcomes. So we kind of feel like we're, um, we, we, we're buddies in supporting each other to do that work of keeping on iterating in the cycle um, of learning improvement. And there'll be a webinar on June 4th. Um, that Jean and Chad and Marsha and I are putting together, and it's basically comparing the two, our, our two approaches, and our similar principles, and, and how we differ, but same goal, right. learning improvement, um, and where our strengths lie. Yeah, I kind of think of it as um, uh, a learning science principle, is that you can learn the deep, important features by comparing and contrasting things that look superficially different. So our centers look superficially different, but under the hood, we're using the same um, principles to guide our work for learning improvement, and EDUCAUSE will be hosting us on that webinar, so that'll be fun. And it's been another great excuse to keep in touch. Yep. And one last thing I wanted to bring up is, there's a, the longest running um, assessment institute is in Indiana, at, uh, in Indianapolis, IUPUI puts it on, it's in October. And it was for many years just focused on outcomes assessment. But uh, Keston Fulcher, who works at the center with myself and Gene, he set up a new track that's focused on learning improvement. And his goal, I don't know if you know this, Marsha, but you're probably going to be asked to speak there. His goal is, is to pull in people with more of a cognition, instruction background to start, start speaking at those kind of conferences. That's why we made that track specifically, so that there can be partnerships like we have 
um, but at, you know, ac across different universities. So it's Assessment Institute, it's in October. There is a learning improvement track for those of you who want to contribute in that way. Yeah. Well, thanks. It's great to learn with you and from you, Sarah. I can't I wait to have a drink with you tonight. 